guys, it's Charlie, I hope you're all well. So this video is going to be a slightly different video, a slightly more serious video. You guys know I suffer with anxiety and it has been asked of me many times if I will do a video on panic attacks and it's taken me a long time to get around to it because obviously subjects like this aren't easy to talk about um, and you kind of have to build yourself up for it. So I'm really just going to kind of talk about my experience of panic attacks and what I do to help them and things like that. Um, so I had my first panic attack when I was about 13, so about 10 years ago now. Oh my god, that makes me really old, I know. Um, and panic attacks at any time are the most horrible things and when it is your first, the first one you have, because you don't really know what it is, it makes it twice as scary. Um, and I remember how just horrifying, really, it was. Um, I was basically um, going to school. My dad was taking me to school. And we got to the gates, and I remember saying to him, I can't go in. And he was like, what do you mean you can't go in? And I just said, I, I can't go in, I can't do it, I can't go through those gates. And that was when the panic attack came. And I felt like I couldn't breathe. My heart was going so, so, so fast. Um, I felt sweaty, I felt sick, and I thought that I was dying. And I know a lot of people, when they get panic attacks, they think that. And thousands of people each year go to A&E um, thinking that they're dying but really they're just having a panic attack um, so some of the things I just mentioned that they can do is things like um, they can make you feel sick um, they can make you feel faint they can make you have palpitations they can make you clammy um, they can make you have butterflies in your tummy, um, chest pains, um, dry mouth. Um, there are so many things. Uh, pins and needles is another one. There are so many symptoms that can come with panic attacks. And they really genuinely are so horrible. Um, and I, I want to say, just never think you're... Never think you're stupid when you're having one and you're scared. Just don't think you're stupid because so many people suffer with them and they genuinely are terrifying. Like, unless you've experienced a panic attack, you don't realise how horrible they are and how draining they are. Like, when, you, when, I, when I have a panic attack, um, I am completely drained afterwards. I will literally, like, spend the rest of the day in bed usually because they are so... They just take everything from you and they can come on from nowhere. Like sometimes I'll just be sat at home and I'll, ha I'll have a panic attack out of nowhere. Um, other times there will be a trigger like for example, you guys know that I don't get on very well with very busy places. But um, the worst places for me are very, very small shops and... Um, also, whenever I have to go to doctors, and I go to doctors regularly because of my anxiety and stuff, and those two things are huge triggers for me. Um, but it really helps once you've learnt what those triggers are, because you can be prepared for it, you can use some of the things that I'm going to tell you about. Um, so it really helps if you're prepared for them, um, and you recognise those triggers, um, because then when you're feeling like it, you know to say to yourself, this is what it is, because I... My anxiety is largely centred on the fact that I worry about illness a lot. Um, I I worry, uh, like if I have a headache, I always think it's something worse. I'm getting a lot better now. I, I used to be one of these people that search for things online, which is the worst thing you can do, by the way. Don't do that, because nine times out of ten, what you've got will be nothing. But if you go online, you think you've got six other things, and it just isn't worth it. It really isn't worth it, so don't don't do that um but that is my biggest thing um and so when i used to have a panic attack 
I would think there's something really wrong with me. But once you realise that actually there isn't anything wrong with you, this is just your body doing what it feels is natural to it in that situation, you feel a hell of a lot better because you can just tell that to yourself, really. Um, the other thing that is so important is to realise that even though panic attacks are horrendous, they cannot kill you. Your body is more than capable of coping with the sensations that arise from panic attacks. It, it's not going to do anything really harmful to you. You might feel horrible. The worst thing that can happen is you could pass out. Um, but that is very, very unlikely. And if you did, that would be the worst that could happen and you would be fine. Um, I suffer with a lot of lightheadedness. Um, because I have a condition called vasovagal syncope, which means basically that sometimes my blood pressure just drops a little bit. Um, it's nothing that I have to take medication for or anything like that. I just have little exercises that I do to help when I feel like it. Um, but obviously, the more you panic, the more you make that lightheadedness worse. So I have to remember when I'm having that not to panic, otherwise I'll have a panic attack and that will make it worse. So it's really important to kind of be able to say to yourself, this is just a panic attack, it's not going to kill me, I'm going to accept it, I'm going to work with it, and I'm going to get through it. The other thing is, when you're in a situation that makes you particularly panicky, and you start to have that feeling of a panic attack, don't run. And I know that is so easy to say, and even now, like after all these years of suffering with it, sometimes I still run, sometimes I still come home, and just class it's a bad day, but it is so important as often as you can that you stay in that situation because if you run, you're just reinforcing in your brain that something is wrong, something needed to be got away from. And really it doesn't because if you stay, yes, the panic will heighten and you will feel the worst you've ever felt. But there has to come a point where it goes back down again. And if you never stay in that situation, you'll always face that same feeling. Um you'll always face that same feeling and you'll never give it a chance to go so you'll never know that you are all right in that situation. So it's so important as often as you can that you stay in that situation that you feel so panicky in um, because that really, really can help. But on the other hand, if you do run away from that situation or you do come home or whatever, don't scold yourself for it. Don't be like, well, that's it, I failed. You haven't. You have not failed. It is so hard it is so hard to be strong 100% of the time. Um, and everybody in this life, whether you suffer from anxiety or not, has bad days. Days where it's really... Oh, I'm getting a bit emotional now. Um, days where it's really hard to um, cope with things, really. Um, and it doesn't matter if... You know, if you can't do it one day, who cares? Tomorrow is a new start, a new day and another chance to try again. And one day you'll crack it and the bad days will become less and less and less. You'll still have them because, like I say, everybody does. But they'll become less and less and less and less. So don't scold yourself. It's just a bad day. Eat lots of chocolate. You know, comfort food. Have a nice hot bath. Go to bed and start again the next day. That's it. It's nothing to feel bad about. We all have days where we can't cope as well as other days. That's just life, you know? So don't don't scold yourself and just remember you are strong, far, far stronger than you give yourself credit for. Far, far stronger. It took me a while to realise that I was stronger than I thought I was. I always thought that I would be stuck forever in this anxiety bubble because it does feel like that. But you don't have to be. You really don't have to be. You can work with it. Maybe it's something you'll always suffer with, but you can get through it and overcome it. And just remember my my little saying that I always, always harp on about is, fear is a snake with no venom. I've got the little saying up there. Fear is a snake with no venom. When it washes over you, give it no power. It can make you feel horrible, but it's not going to kill you. That is so important. Fear is a snake with no venom. Just remember that. It's a really good thing that I always remember. Um, so what do I do to help when I'm having a panic attack? So if I feel or I know I'm going to be going into a situation where I feel really panicky, like, for example, when my sister gets married in April, 
I know it will be a really panicky day for me because there's going to be lots of people and yeah it's just going to be a really panicky day for me so I will take rescue remedy and basically it's just in this little bottle it's herbal so it's because I know that when you're um suffer with anxiety especially like me you worry about taking medication I know I do I hardly take anything if I don't have to but this is just herbal so it isn't going to hurt you um, and it comes in this little bottle like this and then you just open it it's got this little thing like this and you just drop four four drops on your tongue and it just helps to calm you down and oh, I've just dripped that on my hand and it really does help like it, well it really helps me anyway we're all different but this really helps me and you've got things like st john's wort which is similar um but this is so good it's just like someone putting a comforting arm around you really that's how i would describe it and you can also get one for night time if you find night time is a really hard time for you i am not very good with night time because obviously it's the one time of the day where you can really sit around and think a lot so this is really good to help you calm at night as well. And I go through patches where I find it really hard to sleep. But I just start taking this every night. And then in the end it helps me fall back into that pattern. So these are really good. They can get them from Boots, from any pharmacy place kind of really. So yeah, they're really, really good. The other thing, and I can't talk about this enough. This is something I have everywhere with me and it is a paper bag now a paper bag is one of the oldest treatments for um, panic attacks um, I have them everywhere I have them in my bedroom I have them downstairs I have them in my bag to take out with me everywhere I go I have a, a bag um, this you just literally put it on your face show you you put it on your face and you you put it on your face and you breathe in and out of it and it's really good because it gives you back it puts back inside of you the oxygen when your body is trying to get it round so quickly um and it's not it just gives you some of that back and also when you're breathing in and out you can see your breaths which is really good because you can watch your breath slowing down you can see how fast you're going literally these saved me so many times i can't talk about them enough so definitely paper bag there are also two exercises that i do the first one is a breathing one and you basically breathe in for three counts you hold for two and you breathe out for three counts and this is not only good because it gets your breathing back slowly and regularly but also it distracts your brain because you're thinking about the counts Hi guys, sorry about that break in filming, my battery went, I'm now filming this bit on another day so that's why I'm wearing other clothes but I just wanted to, um, I think I got to where I was talking about um, different techniques I use to help with the panic and stuff and the other one that I wanted to speak about is basically you have to go to somewhere where it's relatively quiet, I know that's not always possible but even if you're out and you find like a bench or somewhere just to sit or lay down if you can lay down and you're at home, lay down, close your eyes and then you just basically think of somewhere where you feel some, you can think of a time in your life where you felt really happy and at ease and comforted or you can um, think of a place now where you feel comfortable and when you can picture that place in your brain Think about what you can smell there, what you can see there, what you can taste there, what you can hear, ev e just everything around you in that place. And not only will that make you feel calmer, imagining that you're in that place, but also it, it's, a, again, another distraction for your brain. So that is something else that I do a lot. So those are just a few of the things that I do. Um, there are so many others as well. Um, I'll put some links to some websites down below as well that you can go and have a look. Just remember, as I said earlier on in this video, that you are far stronger than you think and you can cope with a lot more than you believe you can as well. Um, so yeah, just keep going um, and you will, in the end, you will get through to the other end. I hope you didn't find it too depressing or anything and I hope that I helped you a little bit. So thank you for watching and I'll see you in my next video. Bye!